Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. So there's some really good positives that us as traders had to take from today. Okay, so let's kind of review. We'll talk about Apple and their earnings after that in a second. So yesterday we had, you know, a pretty decent poll, right? Pretty decent poll. We talked about how first close underneath supply in a very, very long time. And it was very, very important going into today's trading day that the bulls did a couple of things, okay? Number one, they reclaimed supply. I think that was crucial because if not, again, we talked about the downside measure potential all the way back down to here. So the bulls did that today, okay? Even though they didn't make back everything they lost yesterday, well, you could, you could make an argument. They did a very, very good job. The second thing that I, I felt was very, very bullish, and we'll get into the third in a second. Um, what I felt was very, very bullish was even though there's more and more news coming out on the coronavirus, okay, the market is slowly, and again, I think this is the first batter of the first inning before the first pitch, but I do believe this is the first sign of the market starting to get comfortable, okay? Not with the idea of the virus spreading, but the idea that the virus will be contained and will be looked at as pretty much every other virus that we've had in the last decade, your SARS, your Ebola, your Zika, Schmica, FICA, and everything else in between, okay? So that's very, very bullish. Um, we talked about yesterday how the market was still giving a lot of these darlings, Wall Street darlings, the benefit of the doubt. Because again, the buyers kept on coming in, especially in the options market. Uh, they kept on coming in and buying dips into names of earnings. So for example, even though a company like Apple, and again, we'll get to Apple in a second, and I'll show you why it's so damn important to uh, the rest of the market. But you, you saw volume coming in on buyers in the options market. Uh, again, there wasn't any fear. Despite the Dow at one point being down 400 and change yesterday, there wasn't any fear. There was still uh, dip buyers coming in. They were still aggressive, and they were still way deep out of the money. So that was very, very bullish. So we wanted to kind of see where the first real day, again, we had Netflix a couple of days ago uh, and had its initial muted reaction, then started rallying back. But this was the first day that you saw a really good amount of technology names re you know, reporting, um, a really good uh, representation of the NASDAQ 100. Again, if you look at the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, uh, they're primarily um, represented by semiconductors uh, and biotechs, right? And there's no bigger, there's no bigger weighted, I mean, representative than Apple, right? A Apple computer, in case you guys don't know who they, is, who they are. Um, and if you look at the after hours scoreboard, and I, and I kind of tweeted this out earlier, you saw AMD, right? AMD, you know, down. You had Xilinx guiding lower, down. Now, why is that important, right? Why are these two important? Because then again, they represent semiconductors, right? A big part of the NASDAQ 100. So they're breaking down everything in sympathy. You know, Z uh, NVIDIA is coming in and uh, Maxim, um, I'm sorry, not Maxim, <laughs> wrong one. Uh, but you kind of get, if you go through the whole list, right? If you kind of go through the whole list of, of, of semiconductors, you'll see a lot of them are down, you know, pretty, pretty decent in the, in, in the, uh, in the after hours and in eBay, again, in eBay, uh, eBay down, uh, after the close, again, these are all NASDAQ 100 members, uh, and Starbucks not getting killed or anything, but the point is they are trading lower. And again, if these names by themselves were reporting and you didn't have the juggernaut that you have Apple uh, in in your in your sphere, then yeah, the futures have been a lot weaker because Apple is such a big deal in the biggest way on the Nasdaq 100. Uh, again, if you look at what the Qs are doing right after the close, the Qs are up like 60 cents, and it, it really does show you. And again, there's a reason for I'm saying this. It really does show you once again how the whole index thing, right? People looking at the index 
for strength and weakness, it's very, very skewed. So for example, when the Dow goes up three, 400 points, understand there's only 30 stocks, right? It's very, very easy for 30 stocks to make uh, to make a move when everybody's driving the same direction. So when the market goes down three, 400 points, you have to take it to a grain of salt. So the idea that the queues are rallying after the close and the majority of the names represented in, in the queues are showing some sort of softness, it really, again, it really does two things. Again, stamp the, the point home that indexes, again, are just a guide. They don't make or break your trading day. And, and second of all is it's really impressive, okay, how the bulls are still maintaining control. Hella high water, it doesn't make a difference, manufactured, uh, politically driven, whatever the case may be, the scoreboard is a scoreboard and the queues are up after hours. And it's going to be very, very important to kind of see if the bulls can um live with prosperity tomorrow because they did a hell of a job they did a hell of a job uh tomorrow you have uh, more earnings uh being reported uh obviously some uh, big names for tomorrow uh you got tesla tesla will be definitely the featured one uh tomorrow's session but again not to take it any way way you got facebook tomorrow you got tesla tomorrow again oh by the way you got microsoft tomorrow you got ge tomorrow so you have a good representation you have boeing PayPal, McDonald's, uh, LRCX, uh, ILMN, Las Vegas Sands. You, you got a lot of stuff going on tomorrow. So, the, the, you know, we're slab in the middle of earnings season. Uh, so far, the bulls are doing a very, very good job. And again, if you are a perma bear, uh, you, you can't imagine what the ramifications are if this earnings season doesn't go your way. Because again, you have disease. If that's going to be swept up in the rug, you have earnings, whether they're muted or not. If that gets swept up the run, you have nothing left. I mean, it's very, very, uh, it's very, very easy to say that gravity is real. And it is. And I, again, I, I always trade uh, with the rose colored glasses off. But a, again, you have to love if you're a bull, you have to really appreciate that they have been buying the dips. The options market is still very, very aggressive on out of the money calls. And again, if you see these bets going off on on Tesla today, they're amazing. I mean, they're absolutely amazing. They're they're looking at. Uh, I think I tweeted out. Uh, hold, on, I'll tell you, I'll tell you exactly which one it was. I think there was a bet on Tesla uh, going out to June. I know it was going out to June. Um, there was a bet on Tesla all the way to somebody bought the June eight hundred calls. Right, that they're they're bypassing six hundred, they're bypassing something. They're just going to eight hundred. So you can see how much money and how much uh, risk on they're still in this market. And again, if you are a bull, uh, you have to really feel good about it. Uh, when you look at the trading day today, very aggressive at the open. Okay, very very aggressive at the open. It it, it got uh, much more organized towards the end of the day, uh, and you can see uh, and you can see how the bulls uh, did very very well. Uh, Tesla woke up, Netflix really woke up, even Roku, right? Even Roku that broke down yesterday, even that woke up. You had upgrades today in LK, uh, BYND got downgraded. Some news came out after the close of Tim Hortons. Um, okay, it's taking him off uh, the Canadian menu. Uh, okay, uh, so, but again, a lot of big bets are still being placed. Uh, again, nobody could really lock down the earnings date yet on BYND. So I, I don't think you're gonna have any dramatic, dramatic move on the stock till after earnings uh but again what well, you know going into today i saw that gap up in the morning and i said look i i'm, I'm a little bit hesitant right i'm a little bit hesitant uh, to aggressively trade the open because again because of the gap down yesterday and the fact that we closed below uh below supply so i said everything uh in this morning in this morning session uh please take a second entry again for all you guys who don't know that the the, the ps60 theory uh, there's a pivot, right? And there's a confirmation. There's something called the second entry. And the second entry is once the pivot gets pierced, right? And once you get that first pullback, the second entry is that high of that move of that pivot. It's just basically getting, uh, it's just basically getting another, you know, another uh, face card. Uh, it's almost like double, triple confirmation that's going. So I, I wanted to make sure nobody gets caught on the initial move. So that was the play. And if you look at the action today, it was very, very aggressive. Okay, it really was. Uh, Roku, I didn't trade Roku. Uh, the only reason I didn't trade Roku today, I had my doubts. And I had my doubts because it broke down yesterday on the 128 level. Um, it broke down the 128, broke down 126, went all the way down to 23. 
Um, I had my doubts on the trade. I, again, and again, the whole point of the, P, the, the, the PS60 theory is it, it doesn't care what you think, right? It doesn't care what you think. And the, po the point is these things are either going to go or they're not going to go. Nobody needs to hold your hands. Again, the fact that I wasn't in the trade had nothing to do with the success of the stock. And you sort of took out the 28, went all the way up to the, almost to the 30 area. Again, if you caught the trade, I, again, I just didn't trade it. Uh, I mean, what are you going to say about Tesla? Just an absolute monster. Uh, the first push, I said there's a shot against the 574 pivot. Uh, 571 is an aggressive trader. But uh, again, look at the first move on Tesla today. Um, just, just a really, really exaggerated move. So here was the 571. Uh, and this thing went from 571 to almost like 577. Like nothing. Like absolutely nothing. I mean, really, really aggressive move. We saw a lot of really, really aggressive moves uh, at the open. We talked about BYND. They got downgraded today. And I said, listen, you know, I understand they got downgraded. I get it. But if it builds 125, it could go. And if you look at that first push on BYND today, you'll see exactly what I mean. So here's the 125 pivot. And it broke 25, went to 27. You know, big, quick move. And again, the stock went lower. And there was actually a pivot. And we'll talk about that to the downside today. Uh, that was pretty, pretty good. Uh, LK3940 uh, needs to build. Here is LK. Got upgraded today. Here's a 3940. Went all the way up to like 40 and a quarter. So that was fine. Uh, MNTA, you just, there's no way you could have traded it. Uh, I had it on the watch list, um, 2890, uh, 2890, 29. It opened up like 29 and a half, went to like 30 and change. Uh, unless you chase it, there's no other way. Same thing with BTAI, it opened up like an 1860. Uh, so there was nothing you can do here. And again, as you can see here, take on the way up. Um, so Netflix, Netflix was very odd. Okay, Netflix was very, very odd. Um, the way it traded was very, very thin. Again, you could turn around and say, yes, it did what it had to do. Uh, and it broke above the 347.50 area, 348. And it traded right to that 352, 353 area that I was talking about. It did, but it traded very, very thin. Uh, very, very thin move there. But again, the scoreboard is still the scoreboard. Uh, NVIDIA obviously never got down to the 240 area uh, that we were looking at today. Uh, LK take on the way up. And here's the, and again, here's the whole point. You know, here's the whole point of trading pivots. Again, there was a pivot uh, to the upside of 125 on, on BYND. And here was the pivot to the downside. Again, we don't care which way. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, it's, it's all channels. Uh, it's all the ability to trade these channels both directions. So uh, BYND uh, keeps holding that 120. If it builds below, uh, can flush. So here is BYND to the downside, right? Here's the 120. And I said there's a shot. It gets down to that uh, 17, uh, 17 area. And uh, again, here, as you can see it here, right here. Um, uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Um, did I not tweet it? Did I not tweet this out? But anyway, 121 down to 117. I, th I thought I, I tweeted in this channel. Uh, NK wasn't a bad trade for all you guys who are trading these small cap stocks. NK, you know, like I said, for you small cap lovers, uh, 697 needs to build. And again, nice little spike. Again, not everything is going to be a Tesla, but here was the, you know, here was the, you know, here was the, here's the spike. You know, here was the spike right over here. Let me look at the 60 minute channel. Right. So here was the spike right here, the 690 area. And once it spiked up, went to like 720. Um, yeah, Tesla, you know, Tesla obviously never got out to the 558 area. So then I tweeted out for the afternoon. And again, this is where, again, we're, we're, it's all about ranges. We don't care which direction, uh, ranges to the upside, 575, uh, 565, 75, 576 to the upside, 558 to the downside. Again, there is no bias. And again, Tesla is, this is why it's the best stock ever. So, uh, if you look at the pivot, right, here's the pivot right here. Uh, you know, 565, 75, 76, and it went right to the supply zone uh, at 571. Had a nice trade. I mean, it was a really, really nice move. I know a lot of you guys uh, did well on this thing. How do I know? Well, again, take on the way up, kiddos. That's the whole point. You always want to take as much as you can on the way up. Asif, I love you too. Yes, XOXO, Tesla, Netflix, everything in between. So again, bull market, you know, bull market uh, until it's not. Uh, again, you know, going into tomorrow's section, you, you have to kind of say, you know, does app, you know, does Apple pull everything back up, right? You know, is Apple going to pull everything back up on its earnings or is, you know, is everything else going to pull down Apple again to be determined? But again, until that happens, you always have to give uh, the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Uh, let me give you guys some uh, ideas for tomorrow. Let me see what I want to give you guys. Um, 
Let me give you guys some ideas for tomorrow that it's non non beta. Um, I kind of like this IIPR. Um, I kind of like this IIPR first close over the 50 day supply. If it starts building above 92, 75, 93, you could get a move to 95, 96. Uh, that looks good. Uh, CGC actually looks pretty good for all you guys who are trading these pot stocks. It reclaimed the 10 day. If this thing can just start building back above this 24 area, I think this, it could wake up. So keep an eye on, on CGC uh, and Cigna. You guys remember this SIG? This thing was like a one hit wonder, right? I was waiting, for, I'm waiting for this bounce for like a week and a half already. So it had this big move and it came back here and it came back here and it came back here and it came back here. So it really needs to reclaim the five day. If it could reclaim the five day moving average for tomorrow, you know, start building above, you know, 2670, 2680, uh, I think it could finally wake up. Uh, guys, for all the beta names, Tesla, Netflix, all that stuff, again, to me, very, very busy day tomorrow. Uh, please come into Morning Strategy early. We'll obviously talk about all the pivots on Netflix and Tesla and beyond and everything else uh, in between. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care, guys. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.